Hello artists and welcome back to Art Studio 5. I'm your host Valerie and today we're going to be studying a little bit about the romantic period of the arts and an artist by the name of J.M.W. Turner, also known as the Painter of Light. If you're gonna participate in this, give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. Romantic art does not mean that which deals with love. Rather, it means art which is imaginative, exciting, colorful, and filled with movement. As we advance in this study, try and keep these four bold words in mind as characteristics of the romantic period of the arts. Imaginative, exciting, colorful, and movement. Romantic artists made nature appear dramatic, choosing subjects of adventure and travel. Fine art was not the only area of expression during the romantic period of the arts. Writers told stories of medieval knights and pirates and poets wrote about nature and dreams. You may be familiar with some of the famous composers of the day, namely Beethoven and Tchaikovsky. One of the most famous artists during the romantic period of the arts was Joseph Mallard William Turner, also known as the painter of light. He painted landscapes using light, color, and atmosphere in an expressive way, which was unmatched by other artists of the time. Here you see the burning of the houses of lords and commons by Turner in 1834. Here you see a piece by Turner entitled Rain, Steam, Speed. It was done in the mid 19th century using oils. Are you able to identify some of the romantic characteristics in this painting? Remember we talked about four key words, imagination, excitement, color, and movement. Where do you see these evident in this painting? This piece by Turner is called The Shipwreck, was painted in oils and exhibited in 1805. Shipwrecks and natural disasters at sea were a recurring theme in romantic painting. How does Turner use color in a dramatic way in this painting? Use of color where the dark tones of the sea contrast the white crest of the waves literally paints a picture of a dramatic sea where one can imagine the movement and excitement of what is taking place. Later in his life, Turner's paintings became more abstract. This means that it was not as clear as to what the paintings were of. They were full of swirling colors, some people called them pictures of nothing, but now people love these paintings and call them masterpieces. The painting you're looking at right now is one of my most favorite Turner paintings. It is called Sunrise with Sea Monsters from 1845. Do you notice Turner's bold use of yellow color and dramatic contrast against the rest of the pale white background? The tangible obvious brush strokes create great movement in the piece as well. The theme in this painting is pretty exciting. Can you find the sea monster? During our studio time together, we will be making Turner Abstract Sunrise or Seascape Collages. The list of materials is super simple. You need one sheet of watercolor paper, any size, scraps of paper in various colors. If you're doing a sunrise, you'll want to go for colors that remind you of a sunrise. And if you're going for a seascape, you may pick colors more reflective of the sea. Finally, you'll need a glue stick. And as always, do your best at gathering materials and feel free to substitute where you have to if you're missing supplies. Okay artists, I'm going to be talking to you about the simple materials we're going to be using in this project. Remember to substitute with what you have at home. So if you don't have the scrapbook paper like I have here, replace it with newspaper, old magazines, or even wrapping paper. Just be creative with whatever you have. Cut your water paper to the size that you desire. I'm setting mine up in a narrow landscape format. Here are some tips and tricks about how to tear your paper and use your paper the right way. Think about the kind of landscape that you want to create. I'm going to be creating a sunrise, so I'm going to be using orange and blue paper. When tearing, I want to make sure that you tear in different shapes and sizes, and you want to always tear toward you. This little white edge is so cool because what happens is when you place these on top of your landscape, if you're doing a seascape or a sunrise over the water like I'm going to be doing, this will actually be like the crest of a wave. After you've torn your paper, make sure that your straight edges line up with one another, that they're flush edges, straight edge to straight edge. Keep layering all of your pieces until you are happy with your end result. 
And in the meantime, make sure that you're filling in your entire paper. Filling up the entire paper will give you the best result in the end so you see no white space peeking through. I can't wait to see what you create. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Art Studio 5 where we made our William Turner abstract collage. I hope that you had fun and that you drop your comments and pictures in the comment section below. Remember to like and subscribe. Here's an Art Studio high five for you. I'll see you next time.